Hey guys, it's Angry Admin here, and what I want to talk to you about today is SRDF 9.2 for SRM appliance. So you guys installed SRM 8.4 appliance, and now it's time to configure SRDF SRA 9.2. And this is where the fun starts. As we're running now appliance, SRDF SRA is run on the docker image and during the installation docker container creates its own host name so let me quickly explain you what's going on over there because srdf is run on the docker image now once you download the plugin and um, there is a in the zip file there is a small script uh, called enable auto sl cert gen sh and this will create a host name for the docker to communicate with the solutions enabler and now i will explain you why that is important the host name file is created as a part of initial installation of the sra so that when the sra communicates with the remote solutions enabler installation it passes the correct name of the SRM VM and not the name of the container that is running in Docker on it. Uh, without this file, um, the two will not communicate properly. So unfortunately, um, the first release of the SRA uh, stored the file under slash TMP folder and it was removed when the SRM VM is rebooted. This also occur uh, with the container reload. To avoid the loss of this file upon container reload or OS reboot, the script now plays the file on the mounted volume related to the SRA. For instance, var slash lib slash docker slash volume slash whatever the volume name is um, therefore we don't have to worry about the content disappearing on the reboot because it was stored in tmp and now it's not and just one more important thing before we jump into the installation um, we need to remember that this hotfix has not undergo the VMware certification test. Therefore, you will not find it on the VMware website. You can download this from the Dell website. Um, however, this is not an official um, replacement for a GA version. All right, having that in mind, let's jump to it, how to install SLD FSRA. And one more very important thing, subscribe to that video now and click on the button down below and leave a like and now we can start. Let's start from the Lonic SRDF uh, Docker adapter 9.2.0.1 as you can see it says recommended here. So this is the version we are interested in. Uh, it will take a few moments to download and once it's downloaded we need to um, unzip it and as you can see there is a script file in the folder and the tar where the tar is actually uh, installation and now let's hop on to our srm appliance and it's time to install our storage application adapter click on the new adapter now we need to browse to our file when we had our zip folder and to the tar now just click OK and the installation will kick in and it will take a few months to install adapter and we will see that green message on the bottom corner and uh, that is actually successful and here are the details of our container and now is the time to run the script so basically copy that script to your SRM appliance Either you will use WinSCP or other method or just simply copy and paste like I did. 
just remember to log in with your admin account because the root uh, login is uh, not allowed and then from the admin account you can do su dash to go to root okay let's create our script so now we copy the uh, script body to the file uh, we are creating in the SRM and just save it now once we create the file we need to make it executable so we just use uh, chmod 777 the name of the file and we can run it just remember that script needs to be run on the both protected and recovery side once you run the script it will ask you for a vcenter authorization details so we press yes and we need to provide it. this is this is just once of credentials and uh, they will be stored so let's put the fqdn of our vcenter now but before you go ahead um, you just leave a like and subscribe to that video and uh, visit my blog angry admin and there's a competition section with where you can win a free vmware exam vouchers okay did you leave a like yes okay let's see what's going on with sldf so enter fqdn enter your username enter password and as you can see script run successful we are all set and now i will be doing the same procedure on the recovery side so download the plugin from Dell website uh, ra install it run the script um, so i will speed up the video and we continue in a few moments so to recap we have a srm installed which was covered in my article in my blog we have sldf installed and we run the script which enable the host names now we need to configure two files so there is a file called demon underscore users i need to be more specific there's we won't be modified two files but there's two important files so the demon underscore users file this is required uh, to communicate between SRM and a solutions enabler. So what happened is that VMware SRM execute commands as the SRM user. And due to this, they, the SRM user have to have privileges. And that is controlled by demon underscore users file uh, hence that is already set up and it should looks like this and we should not change that okay the second file which i want to talk about is net cnfg file and this file is responsible for communication uh, he tells the solution enabler client the location of your server. We need to modify that file and add this line. Looks like this. However, you see like the secure part of it. It depends on your environment. Like it could be any or whatever your environment is set up. So you have to talk to your storage team or if you're the storage person, you will know what needs to be done and the location for that file is slash var slash lib slash docker slash volumes the name of the volume sim api config and in this place i will point to my solutions enabler server by changing uh, this www.xxyyz to ip address of the server and also the line below uh, simapi secure i will change ip address of that one as well and for my environment i have to look on the one more place options so in options i'll be looking for a security 
level and again that is totally up to you guys uh, up to your environment and your design in my case I need to find a security level and can you see the security level secure I need to change that to any as I am working in VI I just press I to edit and now I just type in any and then I save the file and this is optional but I want to change XML file as I want to change an option for test failover without local snapshot to yes Now once we configure everything we need, all we need to do is to reboot our SRM appliances and just remember you have to configure both sides. So the site A and site B has to be configured. Uh, just remember not to mix up the IP addresses uh, in the configuration because then it won't connect. There was another obstacle on my way to configure the pairs and um, there was solution enabler itself and it even though I had everything configured correctly it wouldn't connect and the problem was that the my Windows solution enablers version was too old so I had to upgrade that as well but I will show you how to do it in the separate video so subscribe to the channel and click notification button so you won't miss that video and finally we can add pair so we add a pair we click next and now we put a name something meaningful um, the local sim IP server so this is the IP of the site A and on the bottom is the remote site which is recovery site for me site B uh, we put IP address and click next and now we are doing the same for the remote side so uh, this is reverse order so local simapi is your recovery site server and remote is your protected site I uh, could be confusing so be careful here and click next and we can see our pairs here so click next and click finish and we are all set up okay folks that's everything what i have for you today if you learned something from that video leave a like and subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell not to miss any new videos and feedback i would appreciate if you leave the feedback in the comment um, i am new to this so any constructive feedback uh, i would appreciate as well okay um that's it thank you and see you in the next one